Dungeon Masters of Reddit, which of your sure, why nots, had the biggest unintended repercussions? Part one. In a sci-fi mecha campaign, one of my players asked if he could get out of his mech during a mission. It was an infiltration mission, so I figured some stealthy boots on the ground would help. Sure, why not? I decided I'd do something about it, but it backfired hilariously. One of our other players had literally never taken damage the entire campaign. She'd earned a reputation as an unkillable badass and hero of the resistance. However, during a fight against an enemy ace, she took a massive single crit, totally unplanned, that crumpled her mech and nearly killed her. Cockpit Boy avenged her with a heroic effort of his own, downing the ace's mech before hopping out to attend to his injured comrade. Just as he got her stabilized, there was a sound behind him as the enemy ace climbed into his open mech and aimed its guns right at him. Undeterred, Cockpit Boy demanded a charisma check to call the enemy ace a coward and challenge him to come down and fight me like a real man. He succeeded, so the ace obliged. All six foot eleven of him. Naturally, our hero made a called shot to the nuts and rolled a crit. The table died laughing and the day was saved. I had a trap laid in waiting of a bunch of orcs and wargs that were posing as beggars. My lawful good cleric offered to give them aid and money and asked if there was anyone hurt. I rolled with it, thinking a room would be a better trap for them. He then proceeded to heal the aging leader, gaining his trust and the respect of the gang. The ranger did some animal handling to clean the wargs up and make them healthier. They then had a loyal group of street thugs to gather info off of. This then spun off into a side campaign of only orcs that was crazy fun and was used for fill-in when I wasn't able slash ready to DM for a session. One of my friends asked once to be able to put spells inside of a bag of holding and the DM went, why not? You can't safely retrieve them. So at the end of the day, the sorcerer would cast any unspent spells as fireballs into the bag. End of the campaign, after putting a lot of fireballs into the bag, they were up against the BBEG. He used Dimension Door to get next to the boss, and then he turned the bag inside out. Blew himself and the boss straight to hell. I used to DM for a small group. Most of the people were a lot of fun to play with, but we had one dude referred to as M that was always arguing with me or other players and generally disrupting the flow of the game in the name of the rules or quality. Sorry for the length. M was one of those people that subscribed to a D&D magazine and was constantly comparing my adventures to the ones he was reading about that week. After a while, I got tired of all the negativity and offered to let him DM so I could have a chance simply playing the game instead. Sure, why not? M spends a week planning, drawing up actual maps with a protractor and compass on graph paper to create an accurate scale map of the adventure. His latest D&D magazine had a puzzle emphasis, so of course that played a major role. When it's time to play, M hands us all hand-drawn maps and the adventure begins. M, you find yourselves in the town of X, in the crisp summer air. You smell X and see X. This is happening. That is happening. Suddenly, one of you notice a wizard's tournament is taking place. Guy one. I'll start looking around for a tavern. Guy two. Are you any weapon shops? M. No, you need to figure out how to enter the tournament. Guy three. I'm not a wizard. I don't want to do it. Guy one and two. No, no. M. Let's just start the tournament. Okay, it's so railroading. So, as you all enter the first room, you notice a pit that is approximately nine feet in diameter that extends to the walls of your room. On the ground in front of it, you lay two boards, one four foot seven and one six foot long. Guy four. I take a running start and try to hurdle a pit running along the wall. M. No, you don't want to do that. It has something to do with the boards. Guy one. Can we leave to go get a long enough board to cross over? Me. I kick the boards into the pit. M. At this point, he melts down. No, it's simple, okay? This is the first puzzle and you guys aren't even trying. All you'd have to do is lay the boards in a T-shape to cross it. Guy one. Oh, our math was never really my thing. Guy two. No kidding, I'm all of a visual person when it comes to stuff like that. M. Violently tears down his screen, collects his dice, and goes home. We never played together again. A sure why not destroyed our entire party. Sorcerer decided they wanted to magic jar one of two grave knights facing them. Sure, why not? Then the sorcerer decided that they liked their new body and went about trying to murder their companions. That character became a recurring minor villain for much of the remainder of that campaign. Traveler game about 30 years ago. My first campaign. Players decided to rob a bank on a high-tech domed slash airless, significant later, world in the Spinward Marches. To defeat security, 
They befriended, then poisoned, an Imperial Marine and stole his power armor and fusion rifle. I allowed it. Like a fool, they robbed the bank, but the Marine had been reported missing, and so the military and police were both closing in. After a running firefight, they made it to their ship, made some ridiculous rolls to not get shot down. By this time, the body count was in three figures, and they've pissed off everyone with a gun within several astronomical units. So, by the time they exit the dome, they're intercepted by several naval ships, including a cruiser. They had no chance, and they knew it. The only sensible thing to do was surrender and be boarded. They knew that too. So, of course, they dived the ship straight into the main dome, burning at 2.5 Gs. The dome blew, and everything died including my idiot players and my campaign. Six million people dead. Still the biggest atrocity I've ever seen in a tabletop RPG. Learned a lot from that one. I had an alchemist and a tinkerer slash engineer in one of my games. Both were obsessed with blowing things up and I let them experiment with different things. Well, they ended up making a metal vase that would direct the explosion in a single direction. I thought they would use it to nuke bad guys. One session, they were trekking through a mountain pass, and I had intentionally taken out a bridge that was the only way across a gorge to force the players to go through a mountain pass, which was basically the next two sessions. They ended up using said vase they had made before to create a rocket sled. I gave them a really high DC to succeed. Nat 20, the whole party flew over this gorge, hanging onto a sled for dear life. Well, there goes two weeks of prep work and the next two sessions. It screwed me, but it was definitely a memorable moment. Another, I was the player. As a halfling in the Warhammer universe, we came across a herd of goats. I attempted to tame one of said goats and succeeded. I then checked if my halfling could ride said goat and the GM allowed it. GM thought he could kill it off easily. GM was dead wrong. My halfling rode that goat into hell and back. Good times. I threw in a random NPC passed out at the tavern everyone was meeting at to discuss their breaking and entering job. Next thing I know, the party is following him home, staking out his house, etc. Turns out the fact that he had a purple coat on was too interesting, and my initial campaign got scrapped so they could defeat the purple coats who were plotting to take over the government. Who knew? All of these stories are reminding me that the one DM I had that sucked. I had the power to talk to animals. First thing that happens in the quest is a wolf comes out of the woods and tries to attack us. I insisted on talking to the wolf. The DM stated I wasn't allowed. I questioned why I had the power then. He then let me talk to the wolf and I asked why it was attacking us. Because was the answer I got. This was the first time I played and it sucked. I ended up playing again with a different group not too long after and the DM was great in letting us do stupid shit like that and had a pretty good story for random things happening. My first DM almost ruined the game for me, LOL. Players had to reach an island with no bridge slash ship access across piranha infested waters. A paladin's plan was to bless the beef jerky in his inventory to give it more longevity throw it in the water, and swim for dear life. I let it pass, and of course, he rolled a 20, trademark, causing the jerky to become infinite jerky, thus distracting the piranhas long enough for the party to casually tread their way to the island. Not the DM, but a companion to the player that did it. DM designed a boss lair with a column of flowing lava. He only intended it to be there for aesthetic and a potential pitfall for the players. The boss was an immense behemoth. The team mage was a first time player and shyly asked if their magic could allow them to do something with the lava. DM said, sure, why not? The mage proceeded to get a notably high sense check roll and then rolled a nat 20 on their action, which the team persuaded the DM into interpreting that the entire lava flow was magically bent and directed at the boss. What was supposed to be a penultimate boss was literally one shot by the most novice player. Letting a real life chem major have access to a bunch of raw materials. Bombs for days, boys. Edit. For those wondering about metagaming and player versus character knowledge, the character was built with the science crafting equivalents to a surgeon's treat injury check. I just didn't realize how little it takes to make the world fucking burn to the ground. Science is scary. Character wanted a deck of many things-esque D20 that manifested random magic effects when they rolled. Sure, why not? One of the bad effects was everyone had to make a save, and if they failed, they became hostile towards the character. So it happens a few times. Character knows full well that his die can make that happen. They meet Gresh, 
the unspeakable, the council leader of a town ruled by ghosts, reputed to have conquered entire worlds in life. He rolls the die upon meeting him, and it lands on the hostility effect. Gresh, being a ghost, possesses the character and makes him slit his own throat. One of the players in my group asked if they could add a new person into the game. Sure, why not? New player joins. I want to play a ranger and a bit of a loner. Sure, why not? A few sessions in, and the new player is not adjusting well. She wanted D&D to be more like watching Legolas in Lord of the Rings. Never miss and be completely awesome. On top of that, she wants to constantly go off on her own and not really be a part of the group, both her and her character. I am running a combat where the party gets split up and divided, and there is a heavy fog in the area. She sees our druid as a bear wrecking house and generally being a bear, and says, I'm gonna shoot the bear. Now, I'm not one to limit player choices, but I caution her. In the context of the fight, it could have been seen as an accident, and let her know this would be an acceptable time to metagame. She does it anyway. Druid in-game shifts back and says, It's me! Ranger says, I knew that. And then I just let the fight between them play out, and that was the last time I saw the ranger as a person. Hello, my scrumptious little chocolate bub, because thank you for attuning your shimmering tentacles of infinite cosmic potential to this video. You are the best. If you're new around here, please say hello in the comments. If you are a grizzled veteran of my hippie bullshit, thank you for coming back every time and enjoying the stories. It means a lot to me that y'all are here. Please feel encouraged to share your stories in the comments section. We do a few episodes a month where we use exclusively your comments for the stories in the video. And if you'd like to support the channel and your ravenous desire to poop more often in one fell swoop, a poop swoop, <laughs> please go poop swoop over to our D&D friends at Adventurers Coffee Company and use the code Mr. Ripper for 10% off a bag of their delicious Dungeons and Dark Roasts coffee. Again, use the code Mr. Ripper for 10% off some truly spectacular Java. Now, I don't self-promote all that often here because it's really about the stories, but I'm really, really proud to announce that for the first time, an artist that I produced beats for, Johan Don has released the first of what is to be many singles that we've got in the pipeline. If you want some sexy ass R&B to flick your beans slash distribute some free literature to, please check out our new track, Don't Need You, on all platforms where music can be found. It would mean the world to me, and I sincerely hope you love it. Thanks again for watching. Please sub for Nat20s, and may the dice ever be in your favor. Thanks again. I love you. We'll see you next time. Be well.